to our pregame show for the 2023 U.S. Open Polo Championship. I'm Toby Wayman, joined with me as always, Cody Alvin. Cody, here we go, buddy. Thank you, Toby. What a matchup. Really excited for this final. Park Place taking on Valiente. Two of the Giants here in the gauntlet. Should be a fantastic matchup. It absolutely should. Now, we've got a few things here to discuss, talking about these two teams. One of the main things in my mind is the fact that with Valiente, we did have that wreck with Criado with Lucas Criado Jr. and he he went down actually had to go to the hospital but on that play he picked up a dangerous riding call and triple yellow card so that gives him six yellow cards he is not eligible to play in the finals um, on the flip side of that we've got Park Place Park Place has been playing fantastic they've been to every well they've been right there in every tournament they got knocked out of two semifinals now in the CV Whitney and then also in the Gold Cup and so finally they make it to the finals here of the US Open and that's, that's the biggest one everybody wants to get to. So, you know, I have a feeling they're going to come with fire and they're going to come with a lot of passion today. Absolutely. And the experience of having Hilario Ujoa, former winner of the U.S. Open, of course he's going up against Adolfo Cambiasso. But I think that will play a big factor for Park Place as well, leaning on their 10-goal player, Hilario Ujoa. And we've seen at times Park Place, they can start red hot and I think that's going to be huge for them in this final to start strong and finish you know playing a six chucker game we can see at times you know when Park Place has found some adversity in this in this gauntlet season they've gotten down at times and Toby it seems instead of sort of you know keeping their composure trying to flip the switch they almost try even harder get themselves into more foul trouble we'll see if that happens today I don't expect it to but I think this Park Place team really needs to focus on starting strong and, you know, keeping their foot down because we know this Valiente team is extremely strong and kind of in reverse roles. If they get down, they seem to always keep their cool. Well, it's definitely, that's, you know, one of the benefits of Adolfo Cambiasso is, you know, he always, he's a, look, both of these teams, they're winners, you know, and Adolfo knows how to handle adversity. And when things aren't going well, he's the one that can make adjustments on the flies. I mean, he's the best in the world at it. So um, they're already going to be coming in a little bit behind the eight ball, having a, a replacement player. Uh, Pekka Gonzalez is having a fantastic season this year. He's won, I think he's only lost maybe two games the entire year. I think he lost one game in the 16 goals and then lost one game uh, in the gauntlet as well. And that, came to, uh, that loss came against uh, Pilot. All right, we have two very special guests that are going to be joining us here today. We've got Nachi Viana, who played for the MAG team this year in the gauntlet, uh, that was also known as Shack Attack. And we've also got Fergus Gould, who's the director of the Umpires LLC. He's going to be joining us, too, during the show. And we're going to have both of them talk a bit about the finals and also, you know, Nachi's experience playing in the, in the Open. And uh, we're going to get some more information from Fergus on the Umpires LLC, what they're doing, and get his take on how this final is going to play out. Joining us now is Nachi Viana. Nachi played with MAG and Shack Attack this season throughout the gauntlet. Nachi, thanks so much for being with us, buddy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, tell us about your experience playing with this team. 
Uh, it was uh, such a great experience. My first time being part of the Gaudo do Polo, probably the best level here. So it was a good experience, learning experience for me. Competing against uh, the best of the best uh, makes you just improve. So very happy to have been competing here. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, tell us about the semifinal. You know, you played against, against Park Place. What do you think? It's, it's tough to compete against them. Very good organization, strong, strong organization. Uh, all the players on their team super well mounted. Uh, it was fun. It was a great game overall. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get them, uh, but it was, it was fun. You know, you were mentioning how, how, how fun it was to play against Ujoa, Alario Ujoa. Yeah, playing Ilario, it's, it's so fun. He, he just have that intensity nonstop, and he just, uh, he just makes you play in a hurry, you know. Uh, so he gets you in his game, and he just goes and goes. Super, super well-mounted, horses with a lot of power, uh, so it just makes it great, you know. Good horsemen, too. We were talking about the fact that, you know, this late in the season, that semifinal game, it still seemed like, especially Hilario's horses were just still peaking and really tough. Uh, I know you mentioned that as well. He just has so many good horses, and he changes all the time. Just speak about that a little bit, how hard it is to keep up with him in that regard. Yeah, it's hard to keep up. He probably has a good amount of good, strong horses. Uh, and, yeah, you see that he does a couple runs and he goes and changes and probably changes from a great horse to another great horse. So he comes on another fresh one. And he, again, that intensity that he has all the time just makes you try and follow him and, and he gets you in his game, you know. All right. Well, Nachi, thanks so much. Before we go, though, tell us, what do you think each team needs to do in the finals to beat, to beat each other? It's, it, that's a great question. It's going to be a, a good, good game. Uh, both teams super strong. Uh, I think it's going to be very important how they get uh, with the horses for that day, for that time. Uh, I think that's a key probably, given that it's two teams that are going to be, they're both super strong. Uh, and then keeping concentration, you know. Uh, it's a long game. They probably, both teams know it, and they just need to keep, keep that intensity and concentration throughout the game. We have Fergus Gould joining us. He's the executive director of the Umpires LLC. Fergus, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Toby. All right, well, let's dive right into it. Tell us about the program this year. Uh, the program this year, um, I, I feel like we've made great strides. We had our second uh, training camp, and we actually hosted it here at NPC in January. We brought all 30 umpires together, all 30 professional umpires. We talked a lot about the new rules, um, our updated procedures, and really got everybody on the same page, got everyone in the same room. Uh, we did a lot of team bonding uh, exercise as well and worked with a, a mental performance specialist. So you're yeah, really taking a holistic approach to umpiring. Uh, obviously, skills on the field and technical knowledge are very important, but also you know, taking care of mental preparation. And you know, it's, it's a tough job. These guys spend, guys and girls spend um, hundreds of days on the road each year and that takes a toll on, on them mentally and, and obviously on their home life. So just really equipping them with the skills to, to deal with those uh, challenges that maybe aren't that, that obvious to everybody. All right, now Fergus, we have two of the best umpiring in the final. Tell us a little bit about the two guys and sort of some of their history in getting to this point. Absolutely, I'm, I was in the enviable position of, of having a group of umpires, eight umpires that, that umpired all of the gauntlet. And <clears throat> I really could have chosen any two of those eight to go out on the field today. The two umpires that, uh, that were given the responsibility of today's game were Martin Pasquale and, and Julian Appleby. Both of those umpires have umpired the Argentine Open final. Uh, both of them have umpired the US Open final before, and, and Julian, uh, one of the most accomplished umpires uh, in recent history, also has done numerous uh, uh, British Open Gold Cup finals. So, I mean, I, as far as I'm concerned, I could have put any of, of the eight gauntlet umpires out there, but uh, you know, I'm certainly very happy with the, with the two that, that ended up uh, kind of earning this opportunity. And how do you, how do you uh, make that decision, Fergus, as to who you're going to pick? Uh, it has to be a merit-based decision. 
uh, you know, I think it has to be based on performance. Um, and also, you know, we weigh other factors, uh, such as the teams that are playing, the styles that they'll be playing, and, and how, you know, the umpire's communication styles will interact with those teams. So, you know, it's a we look at more than just, you know, balls and strikes, so to speak, um, calls on the field. We, we kind of try and take a... Trying to take an intelligent overall view of, of how the game's going to play out and which umpires will be best suited for the game. You know, I always say on the live stream too, it's, it's, there's a very fine line between a, a high goal play and a foul. And one thing I do know about these two umpires is I think they are more often than not likely to, to let those high goal plays go. And that's not an easy thing to do because they are on the razor's edge of danger and of, of anything, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we have a, a little bit of a saying inside of the program that. It, it takes a lot of courage not to blow the whistle. That's uh, a great way to put it. Yeah, and, and in a game like this, you know, we, we really want to not blow the whistle where possible, blow the whistle where we have to, like I said, keep everybody safe. But everybody's here to watch the players play. Exactly. So, you know, we keep that in mind. What does each team need to do, in your opinion, to win this game? <sighs> that's, uh, that's a tough question. I, I think, you know, you look at these teams, you, you know what you're going to get at a park place. You're going to get a lot of goals. They score a lot of goals. Uh, you have Hilario who has speed, power, and, and what that does is it puts a lot of pressure on the, on the opposition. When, when he has possession of the ball, you know that he's going to be going somewhere with a lot of intent, with a lot of purpose. He's going to do it quickly. And so, you know, you, you have to be organized in defense. Yeah. When he's not in possession, when Park Place isn't in possession of the ball, he, he's so busy. Him and Juan Britos both put so much pressure on the opposition mm -hmm. that you know it, it's like they're smothering them and, and kind of suffocating them. So, you know, I think the important thing for Valiente will be trying to get uh, Adolfo some time on the ball, and and I think that the other two, the two six goalers or you know whoever he plays with today, their responsibility is really going to be creating him some time on the ball and then allowing him to do what Adolfo does. Very good point there, yeah. And you know, the other thing that I, I, I've noticed uh, with this Valiente team is Adolfo, he kind of, you know, there's, a, there's the, the expected play, the unexpected play, and Adolfo's the master at knowing when to use that unexpected play in that maybe he'll, he'll bring that other team back to him. He'll hold the ball just long enough to where guys will get a little, uh, I don't want to say nervous, but impatient maybe. They'll come back to him, and when he does that, there's always somebody open, and he yeah. passes it, and that's yeah. where it seems like this year in particular we've seen a lot of success out of that team. No, absolutely, and you know, I, I, I don't think you can overstate the contributions of, of Peke and, and Lukitas, and yes. you know, you have to feel for Lukitas not being uh, available for this game. Uh, he played fantastically throughout the season, you know, both in the in the gauntlet and and the 16 goal Super Series mm -hmm. that him and Peke won together. But yeah, I, you know, I, I think it, what you what you mentioned is very true, and. Uh, you have you have to balance whenever you're playing against these really good teams. You have to balance being close to the man, and the risk of them being able to beat you with yes. horsepower, and being far enough away that you're not going to give up the long play downfield, but letting them play kind of underneath and, and giving them time to set up their their attacks. Yeah. So the balancing act there is super fine, and you know I think it's worth m mentioning that I think Jason Waits will have a huge role oh. to play today. He played the best game that I've ever seen him play in the, in the semi-final, and uh, you know the, the the two sponsors, Andre and Bob, their their contributions are going to be massive as well. Andre is probably the most disciplined positional player that we, that we've seen in these tournaments. You yeah, know? I agree. He sits at one when they have the opportunity to hit him that outlet pass. He takes the ball to goal, scores more often than not, and that really puts pressure on the, on the opposing team to either go back and make a play on him yeah. or take their chances. Yeah, you really can't let him go because if you do, you're, you're going to give up goals. Exactly. Absolutely. I completely agree with you there. Yeah. And then Bob, he's a very experienced player too. Uh, Valiente, though, this is the first year back for them. They've been, they've been away from Heigl Polo for a few years. Yeah. So I think it's really, uh, I think it's fun that they made it here to the finals. They've already won one tournament, you know. So um, Yeah, you wouldn't tell they've been away for a couple exactly, of years. Exactly, right? You, they didn't miss a beat and, uh, you know, perennial contenders much like Park Place so you know I think two of uh, two of the best teams have made it to the final it's going to be exciting uh, hopefully we see an open running game um, you know and that uh, that the spectators get to get to see something really fun all right well Fergus thanks so much for being with us today man and, and uh, I like you I'm expecting a really fun game so uh, let's get to it
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the USPA Polo Network. And we are here for the finals of the 2023 US Open Polo Championship, the third leg of the gauntlet of polo. And this is what everyone that plays polo in North America, this is where they would love to be. This is the, they're on the US Polo SSN field number one, the Cathedral of Polo in North America. I'm Toby Wayman. Joining with me as always, Cody Off. And Cody, here we go for the final time this season. Can thank, you believe it? Thank you, Toby. I cannot believe it. This is it for all the marbles. Like you said, this is the grand spectacle of polo in North America. The stadium's packed, ton of ton of fans at the field, and I imagine we're going to have a ton of fans tuning in from around the world to watch this one. Two of the best teams in the gauntlet, and I'm so excited for this matchup, Toby. Oh, man, me too. All right, well, let's take a look. Yeah, look at that. They're, they're already... Ujo is giving encouragement there to Jason Waits. He's got a huge cheering section here on the side. I, I was down there. I saw they've got a bunch of 50 seats blocked off for them. they got 50 people coming to support them today. But let's take a look at uh, a quick look at how these two teams made it here to the final today. As our. Yeah, you can take a look right here, Toby, how we got to this point. Valiente, tough route. They had to get through Scone in the quarterfinals. And then you can see Pilot in that semifinal game. Park Place, a big win over La Lina in the quarters, defeated MAG by three to get here against Valiente. And boy, would both of these teams love to lift the trophy, obviously, mm. Toby, but Park Place, they've been seeking this for a few years here in the gauntlet. Valiente, they're back mm -hmm. after a few years away. There you can see the Jamaican cheering section for Jason Waits. Mm. Love to see that, Toby. And wow, what a game this is going to be. Well, the highly anticipated semifinal uh, against Pilot featuring Lucas Criado Jr. leaving with an injury and Valiente reco uh, reco recovering to defeat Pilot in a hard-fought 11-9 victory. Uh, now faced with uh, bringing a new player in, Agustin Nero, Valiente turns to Adolfo in search of his 10th U.S. Open Polo Championship title uh, to help them make, it, uh, make their way to victory. As per usual, Adolfo Cambiasso was exceptional in the victory over Pilot, making two huge steals from Facundo Pires, leading to two goals, and he helped Valiente get into today's final. With 41 goals on the season, the 48-year-old will build on his chemistry with Bob and Peke and Augustine Nero today to defeat a Park Place team that they sent home in the C.V. Whitney Cup semifinals. And, and as we've mentioned, Park Place, they've been knocking on the door. They've made it to two semifinals, and now the U.S. Open trophy is one they desperately want to claim, Toby, with a decisive 11-8 victory over MAG Park Place, led by Andre Borodin, Lario Ujoa, Juan Britos, and, of course, Jason Waits set their sights on the title this year. Yeah, and Ilario Joa, he's been one of the top players this season, behind only Facundo Pires and, and Fran Elizalde in total goals scored with 84 uh, last in this position in 2018 with Daily Racing Form. Um, we, we're going to have an interview that we did with him, but we're going to wait for that because right now we've got the singing of the national anthem. So we're going to go ahead and go fieldside for that right now.
Wow. That was an amazing rendition of the national anthem. Beautifully done. Congratulations there. All right. Well, well, it looks like our color guard is having a little trouble with one of their horses. But Tony Capola, the voice of Polo himself, is down there field side. And he's going to do the introductions of our two teams right now as the color guard is going to exit off of the field. I believe we're going to – Calvary there, U.S. Calvary. Very neat. Love to see those guys out there. They're exiting the field, and then we'll introduce our two teams here. Then we'll have the ceremonial coin toss to cho pick the uh, choice of direction. And then we'll, uh, we'll introduce our – well, we'll introduce our, our two umpires – and then, um, and then we'll get the game underway. So a lot, a lot of pomp and ceremony to get through here on our feature game of the season, not just of the week, but of the season. And there goes the color guard. They exit the field now. And let's take a look. All right, they're going to start off with Park Place. So let's go ahead and take a look at our, our rosters here. So playing for Park Place, we've got Andre Bordin playing the number one position. Number two is going to be Juan Britos, 12 goals scored so far. And then Alario Ujoa with 31 goals scored. Pretty good uh, penalty shooting averages there. And then also Jason Waits, the man of the hour, really played outstanding in the semifinal game, just like Fergus uh, pointed out. And he's got that huge cheering section, definitely the fan favorite for today. Bob Janovis is playing number one for Valiente. Number two, Pekka Gonzalez, who's had an impeccable season this year. Then Augustin Nero coming in in the place of uh, in, in place of, of Criado, Lucas Criado Jr. And then Adolfo Cambiaso himself. The one, the only, the GOAT, the greatest of all time right there, Adolfo Cambiaso, playing number four. And they are finishing their introductions field side right now. And then they're going to have the ceremonial coin toss here where we'll have our two team captains. We'll choose. And that's actually very important because it's going to determine who gets the offensive side of the throw in. I talked to Bob Janavis before the game down on the sidelines and, and he had said, Cody, uh, you know, he said, listen, he's so excited to be here. He said, you know, they stepped away for a couple of years. He had his battle with cancer. He came back from cancer. And he said, you know, I could not be here without these amazing people behind us in this organization. He said, Robert Tito Zeta, number one, is uh, is first and foremost one of the, you know, the guys that, that was really instrumental. And he said, not only was it, you know, just to get him back to Polo, but just to, he, he reckons that this whole organization saved his life, uh, having the support from these wonderful people, Adolfo and uh, David Paradise and, and everybody. So here's the coin toss right there. Whoa. Hello. Let's see what we got. All right, so Bob's going to choose. So Valiente will get the uh, get the uh, their choice of directions. They're going to be going to the left hand side of the screen. That'll be the offensive side of the throw in. Thanks, umpire Appleby. There, giving yeah. us a little point over. Appreciate that, Julian. <laughs> and you know, a big matchup here between two of the best in the world, Adolfo Cambiaso and Hilario Ujoa. They've actually. Had a bit of a head-to-head -head battle throughout the gauntlet. And you can see here, Hilario actually holds a 5-3. and three. Hilario and Park Place hold a 5-3 and three record over Adolfo. Obviously not with this Valiente team, but still something to consider here. You know, with a battle of these two 10-goalers going at it. Yeah, you know, I, I, I said that when I when I was down there and I went and talked to both teams. I said to Hilario, I said, Hilario, you know, good luck to you guys. They were like, thank you, Toby, you know, everything. I said, listen, if there's one guy that knows how to beat Adolfo on this field, it's you. He said, no, 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 it's not going to be me. It's going to be the team. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever you say, buddy. <laughs> but he's the one. He's the linchpin there with that 5-3 and three record. He's probably the only guy in the world that I can think of that probably has a – uh, uh, an average like that of beating Adolfo, you know, more times than he's lost to him, at least in this particular situation here in South Florida. Um, there might be someone in England who, who can claim the same thing, but yeah, I don't think anybody else because we did the head to head matchup uh, with Adolfo and Facundo. And I, and I believe it was, uh, was it five and two? I think it's now uh, Adolfo I think winning? Facundo just got his second, second victory yeah. Re this year, but yeah, I think it may be six and two now. We have to two? go back and double check that, but still, yeah, he dominated that head-to-head -head with Facundo, and that was definitely an interesting stat when we were doing our pregame research, Toby, when we saw that head-to-head -head with Hilario and Adolfo, but I don't, you know, I think you can sort of throw that out the window oh, here today in this sure. final. Going to be, you know, just an interesting game, of course, Augustine Nero filling in for the injured Luquitas Criado, mm -hmm. 
And, you know, interesting in that semifinal game, Adolfo really changed his not only his style of game, but positioning how the team lined up. So we'll see early on, you know, how they have this team going forward. Will they have Augustine up front on the attack with Adolfo in behind? And, you know, Peke can basically play wherever you want to put him, but he is such a good number two as well. So, you know, we'll see if Adolfo goes more forward or if he really takes control in the back and sends both Peke and Augustine up. Absolutely. Our two man officials today are Martin Pasquale and Julian Appleby. Third man is Kimo Huddleston. And I believe it's going to be uh, Hector Galindo for the penalty box official today. Uh, we've got. Uh... Yeah, we can take a look at some horses coming out here. And we got some really good horses, of course, here today. Adolfo Cambiaso, you can see him on your Maria. screen. Delfina Maria. One of his best, one of Toby's favorites. Mm -hmm. and I Mega saw her Big yesterday at the barn at Valiente. Took some videos too, yeah. <laughs> I had did, to post did you a few. Her? I thought, yeah, yeah, definitely that. And, and of course, Paloma, my favorite there. I got to see Paloma and I, I went and gave her a pet too. So it was pretty neat. Well, we also caught up with Jason Waits and he told us a little bit about this amazing horse that he's starting on, Lavinia Castagna. And they've, they've shown up for me every day. Castagna has given me a lot of minutes in the open. Uh, and Serena, the gray mare, uh, Toby likes to talk about a bit. Um, they're both, com they're a little different. One's a small chestnut mare, the other's a big gray mare. But they both have a lot of heart and uh, a lot of fight. And they've, they've shown up for me every day. And well, yeah, yeah, and Serena, that amazing gray horse we're used to seeing Jason start on, actually was off his list for a couple of games there. I didn't want to ask too much about what was going on, but she is a spare here today. So I imagine we'll see Jason jump on her quite a bit throughout this game. Well, you know, she, he's got so much confidence on that, Marion, as does anybody that's ever played her. She's a team horse and uh, really just amazing, you know. And then we also, you know, we got um, Nero, uh, Augustine Nero today. He's, he's going to be starting on Ahi there, too. That's one of my favorite horses. Yeah, we just saw the 2-4-3 yeah. walk off the screen there. And then... Um, yeah, so, and Look then Cinco, of course, for, for, for uh, Peke. Yeah, too. Peke will start on Cinco, which he always does. He has so much confidence on this amazing gray horse as well. And uh, Hilario Ujoa starting on Lavinia Irupe, one of his best and favorites. And I'm sure we'll see Irupe likely back later on in this game in Chucker 5 or 6. Okay. Andre Bordines on Open Internacional. Bob Jernavis starting on Dolphina Astral, which is an incredible horse. Here we go. Adolfo wins the first throw in of the game, fires downfield towards that goal. And look at this Peke riding hard to take out Jason Waits. He's got him beat. Now open back shot. Ah, oh, well done. Jason knocks that ball down. He'll take possession here. He's got Britos behind him. He'll go ahead and turn that one back around and give it over to Britos. Britos picks up the ball, takes it with him. Adolfo comes in to light up Wano. Wano's going to leave this ball. No, he's going to take it to himself and now turn back around. Look at that mare move for, for Joa right there. That was awesome. Now Britos. And I tell you what, Juan Britos, before the game, when I went over there, they were warming up. They were kicking the soccer ball around, the three of them. Uh, uh, Andre was sitting down, and the other three guys were kicking the soccer ball. And Juan looked completely at ease, relaxed. I was like, Juan, I didn't know you had those kind of skills. Ujo. I said, yeah, I didn't. he didn't know he had them either. But anyway, we're playing polo right now. Here comes Juan to pick up that ball, taps it forward. Now, taken right here, well done. Ujoa comes in, steals it away. Clean play right there. And that's one of those high goal plays that we talk about. Nujoa in the red zone right here. He's going to get it done. Alario picks up the first point of the day. 1-0. Now the score part place in the lead. And that is what we like to see. Alario Ujoa coming out strong and going straight to the goal. What a fantastic pickup there. Lavinia Rupe just exploding for Alario going to goal. And he's so tough to stop once he gets his head down. Great hand-eye coordination. Peke has to try to play catch up here. Gets the hook in, but far too late as Hilario picks up goal number 85 on the wow. season. You know, he realistically could get to 100. I, re you know, wouldn't put money on it. He'd have to have 14 the, goals. It could be done. It, yeah. Well, 15 more. He'd have 16 total. 16 total. Today, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Which, you know, it can be done, but it would have to be a ridiculously monster day here in but the if, final against Adolfo. I, yeah, you know, I know it's tough. But one thing about we know about Ujoa, you know, the, you know, he's in the moment he owns it. You know, he's, uh, he's never going to let it go. He's going to make sure that he puts it on through. And here comes, uh, or it looks like we're going to get a replacement here. Bob. So, yeah, I talked to Bob earlier. He said he's been nursing these. You got his, you can he, see the wrap his, on yeah, his leg he there. Said he's, he was hoping he was going to be. He's been nursing this injury for a couple of weeks now. So 
unfortunately, Bob doesn't look like he's going to be able to continue, which is, I would m imagine they're going to put in uh, Rufino Merlos like they did in the semifinals. I did see uh, they, yeah, Rufino that, down there. Yeah, they are a 21-goal team to yeah. note with Augustine Nero on the field. This is the U.S. Open, so no handicap goals are given. But I would imagine, we'll get the word soon, Toby, but I imagine, like you said, we'll see Rufino Merlos. Yeah, I'm getting the word right now. Yeah, Rufino's coming in. So that's unfortunate for Bob here in the final. You hate to see that. And, you know, we know Bob's been nursing that injury. Don't want to put too much focus on it. But like you said, recovering from cancer recently as well, he's done an incredible job to stay fit throughout this season alone. So we, you know, we really hope Bob's recovers from that injury quickly. Who knows? Maybe he can come back later in this game. But for now, unfortunately, it looks like Bob is bowing out to Rafino Merlo. So it's going to potentially change the horse list as well here for this Well, team. everybody went and got off on both teams, so I'm assuming we're going to take a few minutes here. So we're going to go to a quick break, and then when we figure out what is happening, we'll come back and let you all know. So stay with us right here on the USP Apollo Network. What was the most memorable moment of the 2018 U.S. Open victory? Um, it's, it's a lot of good moments, definitely, because it, it was a special year and I had a, a lot of fun with that team. But I always remember that the, um, we started the game, we were the four of us on a great day, playing great. And after I had the, the hit on my eye, I remember that, you know, the, the next play, I think uh, Tino Bregon did an amazing goal. The next play, Jared did a great play. The next play, Nino did an amazing play, and I said, like, I felt it that this is the day, you know, that that it's not it's not me, it's not one player, it's one of those days that the whole team shows up and everyone plays great and everyone does a, an amazing play, and and I think that's why we won, you know, because uh, everyone played probably the game of their life. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Here we go. So we did get the uh, confirmation that Rufino Merlos is coming in. Rufino is uh, one goal right now. He is going to two in May and then three in December. So obviously a very, very skilled young man, and that's going to change the dynamic here for sure against this Park Place team. Now, I did talk to um, Nacho Novillo Estrada, who's the coach for Park Place, and he said, look, we have a game plan for for for." Either way, if Bob stays in the game, great. And he said, we're not expecting, you know, he said, we're, we're, we're expecting him to, to go either way. He said, so we have a game plan set up for both. And he said, the main thing for us today is we want to stay. We want to play a consistent six chuckers. He said, we got to stay close to the man. We got to get to them before they get to the ball. Um, you know, because we're only going to get one opportunity here uh, at this at this game. So it's it's now or never. This is it. Here we go. Adolfo wins another throw on the second one of the day. He's going to take off with this one back around to the right. Now, Adolfo Cambiaso, he's going to go ahead and hit this ball. Oh, knocked down. Nicely done right there. And now, let's see. 
It's going to be Britos to get a hold of that ball. He sends it down, and here comes Ujoa to pick up the play. He's going to be challenged right there by Nero, and he leaves it behind. Britos comes back to it, and so does Rufino. And now, well done, Jason. Gets in there, takes out the man, lets Brit uh, Wano have the ball. And look at that. You got uh, Jason trying to get away from the man. He's going to go in here and try to get a hold of Adolfo. Good play by Jason Waits. Takes out Adolfo right there. If he can stay with Adolfo, he's making a 10-goal play. But we get a whistle here. Let's see what they decide to do. I thought it looked pretty clean there myself. but Yeah, Peke had his mallet up. Think I think he was thinking Wano was pushing him into the right of way. And it looks like that might be the case. Keep an eye on Wano here. Green helmet. Peke comes to his left, and he's going to end up riding Peke uh, just into the back end of Valario there. So a penalty five spot hit. Good eye, Cody. I didn't see that one myself the first time we saw it. All right, penalty five. Here we go for Valiente. And they are changing it up. They're having uh, Peke take the, the knock in here. Penalty five, I should say. He's going to send it over near side back shot. Now taken by Adolfo on oh, Maria. God, I love this horse. Here he goes. She's beautiful. He hits this one back up. And now coming in, it's going to be, whoa, a dangerous play here by Jason. That, oh, they got lucky there. Nero shot. He puts too much angle on it. goes over the back line wide. We'll have our first knock in the day awarded here to Park Place. Yeah, a little lucky there. Perhaps a little miscommunication. There, here she comes. Yeah, there is Serena. Serena, Serena. Serena. And again there, I think Jason was almost thought Andre was going to go take a back shot there. Andre I, left it yeah. for Jason. No. Okay, so uh, welcome back, everybody. We had a, a an injury happen right there. We had a, a play where, where Pekka Gonzalez was uh, – they were turning the ball, and, and Pekka Gonzalez came in behind the, the player that was turning the ball and, and kind of horse tripped. He went down, and um, – yeah, so we yeah he, he tripped. He went down, and he jumped right back up. He's okay, but nevertheless, that's why we cut away real quickly there. And as you can see, he's up walking around now, so he's fine. The horse is fine. Just want to let everybody know that. Yeah, but, he uh, collided with Juan Britos with there. Britos, Both right. Juano, I think Juano just jumped down to check on Packet, but he was back on his feet right away. Lucky, yeah. happy to say. And like you said, the horse popped up right away as well, walked off the field under own power, looked just fine. So... Just waiting here. I think Peke is A-OK. -okay. Yeah, there you go. That's There's good some good sportsmanship. And yeah, it was just a, a bit of a weird play there where Wano was trying to get that ball turned. It was tough even for us to see if he you know, changed the line. It looked like Peke was sort of riding out the line or what he thought was the line. I don't and, even know if it was that. I think that they just Wano just changed it so quickly and, and Peke right, maybe was, didn't see right. it coming, you know, and just, yeah. Either way, we'll have to wait and see here what the officials decide. Correct. As we wait for Peke to get mounted back up. No, it did. Okay. So Nero went over there. Remember, he's, uh, obviously Nero is playing all of, of, uh, of Criado's horses. And, you know, something else I have to say that I'd love to point out here, uh, that I think is a huge feather in both Peque and Lucas Criado's caps here is the fact that Valiente is not giving them any horses at all. They're playing their own strings completely in the U S open. That is something amazing right there. No help from Valiente whatsoever. Um, they are playing all their own horses. Adolfo even said, you know, like, you know, that's amazing for them. Congratulations to them and to their, to their fathers for working so hard to get them mounted up. But, um, uh, that's something that I really wanted to highlight here is that all these horses that we see both those guys, well, that Nero is playing and then also that Peke is playing, they're all their own horses. And when we talked to Peke earlier in the season, he said, uh, you know, this is the best year he's ever been mounted in his life. And, uh, and well, I mean, obviously it's shown. Uh, Absolutely. Playing here and in the 16 goal. Yeah. And, you know, I was actually talking to you, Toby, before 
we got on air about Peke's list today, he has six different horses. You know, a lot of these top players, and like we normally see in Peke, they'll have their, you know, chuckers one through four, and then they normally start on somebody back in five and six. He has so many good ones right now, and they're all going so well right now that he's starting on six different horses. I'm sure we'll see some of those horses as spares early as he gets back. But like you said, just a, a feather in the cap. And the matter of the fact is, you know, if they didn't have enough horses going well enough. I'm sure Valiente would be wanting to pass some horses. But like you said, and like Adolfo told you, these kids have just been so well mounted this year. It really is. It's, it's quite amazing. All right. So we're waiting for the call to come in. All right. We get a yellow card. Dangerous riding. I'm not sure who it's going to be against yet. It looks like Britos. Interesting. And, and Juan's like, me? How's it on me? I kind of agree. I Well, I don't know. We'll see. It was a tough one. I think, you know, we we didn't have the best angle of the replay when we were looking at it there off air. Yeah. I think they're going to actually hold there, on. You know what? There might be a yellow on maybe it's yep. off. Okay. Here. So it's offsetting both two yellow cards, one against Britos, one against Gonzalez. So right of way violation. I think. Yeah. Juano didn't perhaps just turn the change line too quickly. And then any, anyways, it looks like a yellow card. Yeah. Well, We'll get confirmation when we get more information but about offsetting it. But offsetting fouls now, Yeah, essentially, yeah. So here goes Britos. He's going to win this play. He takes off running. Wano, he's in the zone today. You can tell. And look at a great job there by Jason Waite staying with the man. Britos now gives a pass up here to Ujoa. Ujoa breaks down the right. He picks up the ball. He's going straight to the goal. Gets away from three players. Drops that ball. But Britos is there to pound it forward. And here we go. Ujoa on the break. He's out in front. Nothing but green between him and the goal. They can't stop him. Man, right now, Ujoa, he's not going to miss. I can tell from the approach. There it goes. It's straight on through. And we got a 2-0 ball game right now. And Ujoa is on fire. And these guys are playing lights out here early in chucker number one. Quick change. Something that that Nachi Viana mentioned to us pregame is how quickly and efficiently Hilario changes horses. He's always on a fresh one. What a run again right here, head down to goal. Some of the best hand-eye coordination in the world. Hilario Ujoa makes it two to nothing all by himself early on in this game. Great start here for Park Place. What an amazing play and Adolfo says all right here we go got to get on the board now he's going to win this throw and he breaks right back down the right hand side he checks up here now Adolfo Cambiasso holds that ball now Adolfito is going to come back to it here Ujoa is there Ujoa lays a hook on him Ujoa and now Adolfo gets in the sword fight now it's going to be Peke to come over the ball we get a whistle stopping the clock once again no and we don't we don't show it yeah we'll wait and see what the officials decide here looks like a Pending penalty four here. For Valiente riding in from behind. Huh. So they're going to catch Hilario yeah. here riding in underneath Adolfo. So penalty four awarded here to Valiente and Adolfo Cambiasso. Okay. Penalty Adolfo. four for Valiente. Another one of these days, Toby, you can sort of throw previous stats out the window because it's do or die time here in the Look final. And yeah, and that's the thing. Like I always say, when the game's on the line, winners want the ball. Well, one thing we know about Adolfo, he is a winner and he is going to he's going to score those goals when he absolutely has to. He's going to make them happen. And, he, and that's what we just saw right there. So now it's a 2-1 score on the board. We come back to center for a throw in. And Adolfo, he has an incredible 8 for 11 penalty four record here now in the gauntlet. Just Unbelievable. Incredible from the 60. Ujoa wins the throw in, keeps it away right here from Rufino Merlos. Now Ujoa gets hooked there by Rufi, and now it's going to be well done, Andre. That's the way. Andre Boradin gets that ball, but it's going to be picked up here by Ujoa, uh, by uh, Adolfo. Adolfo, now he's got Britos there to put him in the pocket. He's going to turn it back to the right because he's got Peke there to lay the pick for him. Peke is going to give him that time, then takes off running for a pass right here, and Adolfo is going to hit him on the fly right down the middle. Here comes the shot to Rufino Merlos. Merlos takes a shot towards the goal, and here goes Andre Bordin to take him out. Andre is going to go to the ball, and so does Ujoa, and this one's going to be close to the back line, and Andre is going to leave it here for Alario. He turns that ball back. Alario, whoop, they ride in. Interesting. All right, now, well done. Good play there by Jason Waits. If they don't blow the whistle, he's going to keep on playing the game, and here comes the shot. Now it's going to be... Peke gets that ball, turns it to the inside here, up on the handlebars, whistle. I'm going to blow this one against part place, I would imagine here. 
Okay, here is burritos. And I think they're catching him right there on a right-of-way violation. Penalty number two upcoming for Valiente. Aye, aye, aye. That's the one thing that we've seen Park Place struggle with over the years, and, and, I, and I do mean years, is, is that uh, you know, they're, they're such intense, aggressive players that they have a tendency to get into some foul trouble. They're, what are they uh, in fouls committed, Cody? Re refresh my memory here. They've done okay this season, season, though. They're right around the middle, ninth overall. Okay. All right. So but not too you're, bad. You know, in the past couple of years, you're right. They have been up near the top of fouls committed. So they've cleaned that up a little bit this season. All right. Peke. Especially here. That's going out. Look at that. Oh, no. Wow. You could tell the way he took that swing. That was going out. Wow. Peke Gonzalez missed a penalty, too. Is that the first one he's missed all year? Peke Gonzalez. I believe it is the first penalty, too, he's wow. missed. Let me just double-check that for you. Yeah, he was actually perfect on all penalties. One for one on his fours, two for two on threes, and now six for seven on his penalty twos. You no, know, a big moment. You're not, you don't expect that. Uncharacteristic from yeah. Peke Gonzalez. But Lucas Criado Jr. has been taking mostly, mostly all penalty twos and threes. We've yeah. seen Peke step in when criado has been on maybe an uncomfortable sure, horse. Sure, sure, yeah, or changing or something. Yeah, exactly. All right, here we go. Here's the knock-in. Britos is there to pick up the ball. He's got Agostin Nero coming in. Back shot made by Adolfo, and now it'll be picked up again by Britos. Buono, look at that. Look at Jason doing work right here, taking out those defenders, letting his guys have some time that they need. Here comes Ujoa to pick up the ball. Peck is there to put Ujoa in the pocket. Ujoa trying to find a place to go. He's going to leave the ball now for Britos. Britos, they play off of Britos a little bit here. He'll pick it up on his near side. Buono turns it back around to the right. Man, I tell you what, you can tell he feels confident here today. Jason takes it forward. Back to the inside. Well done, Jason. Good play right there. And now Peke has to get out of his way. Ujoa comes back in. Jay, Jason did a great job there of just being a placeholder for the ball and letting Ujoa get back to get the ball picked back up and now takes off running with it right here. Now, Ujoa working down from right to left. The funnel effect comes into play as he breaks back towards that goal. Drops it there. Next one to get to it. Going to be Adolfo Cambiasso. Good play right here by Rufino Merlos. Now coming in. Let's see. It looks like we run out of time. So the score stands 2-1 to one at the end of the first. Chuck, or Park place in the lead. Pet Valiente had their chance, but unfortunately, they were not able to put that penalty two on through, so that could come back to haunt them later on in the day. But we'll be right back after this quick break here on the USPA Polo Network. Playing for Valiente Polo team, and I'm from Argentina. The difference between playing with Scone in 2021 and Valiente this year, uh, honestly, it's not much of a difference. Obviously, I'm playing with a Negrito instead of Poroto, and with Bob instead of David, but uh, it's funny because the, the people around each team is kind of the same. So I, it was the same as when I played in Scone in 2021. So it's kind of the same atmosphere and we hang uh, along pretty well with each other and we play practice games together and we help each other a lot. So it's kind of, kind of a similar feeling, honestly. Uh, to play now with Valiente than what it was with playing with Scone at that time. Uh, one of the most important things that I learned playing with Adolfo was uh, is, uh, the horse management, uh, how to put them in training, how to prepare them for each game, uh, how to make the horse list probably uh, for each game. Uh, and then polo-wise you learn a lot also, how to make each play, which play you have to make in each moment. And when you make a mistake he comes and tells you the mistake to improve, no? not, a, not to, to tell you something bad, but to, to make you a better player. So every day you learn, every practice you learn, uh, and game by game I think he gives you a lot of confidence to, to keep improving, no? and that's amazing. I think Park Place is uh, an amazing team. Uh, they have really good players individually, and I think they're playing really well as a team also. Horse-wise, they're amazing, probably one of the best teams organized. Uh, so I think we have to to be sharp on them, uh, be the closest we can to them, because if you give them a little bit of space, they will run you like nothing. Uh, so I think it has to be a really close close uh, matchup between all the, the players. Uh, keep an eye on, on Ilario and Juana, that they're really, really talented, and uh, uh, try to play as close as we can to them, because they're amazing. Okay. So welcome back here to the USPA Polo Network. Check that out. 
we've got uh, – there's the Jamaican section there cheering on Jason Waits. I stopped by and said hello to those people. They said they have 50 people coming in here for Jason. Let's check out his, uh, his feature here. Well, look at this. First Jamaican to compete in the U.S. Open Polo Championship. And as you mentioned, there's about 30 Jamaicans who flew up, you know, in pretty short notice just to come watch Jason here today. Here's a cool picture. This is 10-year-old Jason Waits representing Jamaica against Newport in 2001. Look at that. That's so cool. And here is young Jason Waits with Adolfo Cambiasso. So playing against one of his heroes today has uh -huh. to be super exciting for Jason. I'm sure he's very proud to represent his Jamaican heritage as well. This is great. We had a comment coming in on, on Facebook. It says it's from Kathy Coors. She says, Jamaican me crazy. Coors uh, triplets uh, field side. So Jamaican me crazy is there field side right now. You can see them. That's so cool. Yeah, they said they, somebody said there's 50 people, not just 20, not 25 or 30. There's 50 people that came in to support him here. So that's awesome. Well, we'll talk a bit more about these horses in a moment here. One I wanted to mention is MC Alexis Ren for Juan Obritos. He's been playing her as a spare. She actually started with Jason Waits, yeah. a Park Place horse, and she's been going just lights out. For Wano, so good he's starting on her here in the second. I imagine we'll see her back later in the game as well. Oh, for sure. Now, here we go. Ball's back in. It's going to be Ujoa coming out of there with control of that ball. Gives it over to Jason right here. Jason looking for the whistle, and he might have just, let's see. Well, we got a whistle here. Looks like Jason might be hurt. Well, just as like we were singing that. his praises. Yeah, it looked like he dropped his mallet as well, so taking something off that right arm or hand. So this horse here that we've got uh, Adolfo on, Remember, this is this is Squirrel, right, uh, that Adolfo's on. Um, I forgot to mention this last time we saw Adolfo play, but this horse was made by uh, – Bob Bob uh, Jernavis reminded me of this. This horse was made by um, by uh, Owen Reinhardt in South Carolina, in Aiken, South Carolina. Makes a lot of sense. Looks like an Owen Reinhardt horse, the way she plays J5, Dolphina Squirrel, one of my favorites, Toby, yep. just seven years old, from Dolphina Boeing and Foxy Lady. Owned and bred by J5 Equestrian. So a little time out here for Jason. That is, <clears throat> excuse me, that is Lavinia Alianza that Jason stepped off of. Here's Hilario, and that was Hilario Ujoa. Hold on, here's the replay, Toby. Check it out also. the uh, Might have got a hook on the hand there. I think so. And we've got um, Rufino Merlos. He's playing the, uh, the Wembley clone. I got to stop and see Wembley clone yesterday too. And uh, I believe if Bob, if I remember right, Bob told me that they left him intact. That's a stud. So they're going to send him to uh, Aiken, I think, to start breeding. I'm not sure if it's this one or you said they have another one in Argentina. Another Wembley clone in Argentina. Another top horse here for Hilario Ujoa, Lavinia Morea. Uh-huh. And hopefully Jason's okay. Yeah, I think just a hook on the hand there potentially. For Jason well, that's exactly how we lost Colo Gonzalez in the beginning of the year in, uh, in the 16 goal. Got a hook on his left hand, broke his hand. Mm -hmm. See, the rest of the horses here, this Chucker Peke on another one of his great Go gray Ruta. horses. Yeah, GT Pojaruda, Augustine Nero on Lac Sarah. And we'll see Andre Borodin here on Incari Italia, one of his favorite horses. So you can see the umpires discussing this play with the third man right now, reviewing whatever angles we've got. Let's see if we can see that. Let's watch it again. Let's see the replay there, because I'd like to see what exactly we had happen. Okay, let's yeah, keep a close can... eye right here. Watch Jason, that number four in blue. And I think it's Nero here in the blue helmet coming in. Makes the hook, there, but... Yeah, and I don't know if he made the hook and an injury occurred or if he I caught just, a piece of Jason's arm. It was tough to see. It didn't. It looked like he was too far away to me to be able to actually make contact with, with his the arm. Hand, yeah. yeah, unless it's a cross hook there is what they might be blowing. Well, they might, yeah. And we'll if so, here. he could have. that could have hurt his shoulder then, in which case, you know. You know. Either way, if you get hooked hard, sometimes it can just rattle. That is a cross hook. So Jason's still getting checked out here. But I tell you what, that's, uh, I mean, that my, my dad, that kind of, that's a play that ended my dad's career, high goal career, was uh, he got cross-hooked uh, and it tore the rotator uh, cuff off the bone. Yeah, it did look like from this angle, for sure, Nero, maybe not all the way across the back end of Jason when he made that hook. Mm, mm, mm. 
We will see, though, if what the umpires decide. I think they're waiting for Jason to be checked out and mount back up here. It doesn't appear like he will be leaving this game. I don't no, think he's even leaving the tough. field. He, the, even, if he was, even if he was totally hurt, and broke it down. He couldn't leave with all his fans in the sideline. There's no way they wouldn't let him. The, 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 the Jamaican me crazy fans would uh, would eat him alive if he left the, if the field at this point, I think. So, yeah, indicating, we just saw umpire indicating a, 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 a hook, it looked like, or, a, you know, a swing. We'll f wait to find out. Stacy Galindo says cross hook too. Yep. Yeah, let's we'll see here. Jason back up in the saddle. You never know. This opportunity may only come once in a lifetime <laughs> for a guy like Jason Waits. It's so true. It's very true. You never know. You know, we've been talking. We talked yeah. about it a lot with other players, and don't want. I don't want to say anything, but it just seems you play in a position like this with Park Place. Usually, your handicap goes up uh, after. That's a true. Season. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So you know, you gotta you gotta see that moment, and you know, or else you're you know, who knows what can happen. Here comes, you know, when are you going to get another opportunity? Here comes the shot. Now it's going to be taken right here. Looking good. Shot at the goal. And it's off to the right. Here comes Andre Bordin. Andre gets called off by Ujoa. Ujoa with an open back shot. Clean play right there. And Britos comes in. I tell you what, I'm impressed with the way Britos is starting this game off today. He's starting with power. Really looking good. Now reaches down there and gets that ball. Tries to get away from Nero. Turns it all the way back around. Adolfo comes in to challenge. He's going to make the hook right there. Adolfo comes in again. And... Adolfo Cambiasso will pick up the play and turn it back around. He's getting some good protection right here from Peke. Now, they're giving him time, just like uh, Fergus said. You know, can they give Adolfo time to do what he wants to do? But here comes Ujoa and now Rufino Merlos. And there's your shot at goal. It's going to be Agustin Nero to tie the game up at two goals apiece. Well done, Agustin. Very nice pickup there from Nero. Let's take another look at this one. First goal of the field for the day from them. Yeah, he made a great play. Watch this. Hilario waiting for this ball to drop as he comes in here. Nero gets position on him. Ball pops up open on his right hand side and he gets that one in quickly. Is it just me or did did, uh, uh, did Jason look a little tender right there, you know, with that? I imagine his arm's not feeling 100% yeah. after that injury timeout there. All right, ball's put back into play. Open. Uh, let's see, near side next shot there. Now it's going to be Adolfo to win the third throw into the game here. Ujoa comes in for the steal and. He's going to win that play. Alario. Ojoa. Turns it back around. Here comes Peckative Challenge. He's going to hit the back shot there. Looking for anybody but Nero. Nero's able to hit the next shot back across the field. Now coming in, it's going to be Britos to lay the bump on Nero and let that ball be picked up there by Ujoa. Ujoa goes to the near side back shot. Another back shot there from Juan. Uh, Juano comes in for the steal right here. <laughs> now Juano. Still holding that ball. Looking for a place to go with it here. He's going to go ahead and fire this one back across the field right now. Coming in, it's going to be picked up by Ujoa. Excuse me, I take that back. It's going to be taken by Peke. Little open. Oh, what a play. Peke turns, hits the open back shot, and picks up his own play. Picked up now by Jason Waits. Jason's cleaning that right there. Whoa, that was, yeah. I think Adolfo might get caught here. Let's well, see what they decide to do. Yeah, very confident. From Jason Waits, either way there, you got one of the best, well, the GOAT the coming goat. down, yeah. trying to scare you out of the way. I might have left it for him. <laughs> I think I would have too, Cody. <laughs> Jason coming in. Yeah, I think he, from That's, that angle, looks clean. They're going to go They're going to go to the foul. Adolfo. Yep. Good call here. Penalty three. You know, another thing that's really amazing about that play is Adolfo is one of the guys that fouls least out of anybody that plays high goal polo. I mean, the guy you can count on probably one or two hands at the number of fouls that he'll he'll make in an entire season. And for, for, you know, the young Jamaican player to be able to draw a whistle on Adolfo, that's another feather in the cap right there. Yeah. Certainly won't try to read Adolfo's mind, but maybe one of those plays where he thought he might be able to scare Jason Waits out of there. So kudos to Jason either yeah. way to draw that one. Penalty number three here for Hilario Ujoa. Four fouls going against Park Place so far, and only one. Against uh, Valiente, excuse me. Plus the the offsetting. Off, foul. Yeah, that's what I was. I was like, wait, where am I? I'm missing something here. Yeah, yeah, you're this right. Is the first penalty shot and 
any fashion for Park Place and Hilario makes no mistake. He has missed one penalty three on the season, but only one. He's now 11 for 12, okay. up over 91%. So we have a yellow against uh, Peke and against Britos. You're right about that. I forgot about that one. Thanks. Yeah, like, we didn't missing have, one they somewhere. Did, they <laughs> did update us and tell us that there was a yellow on Peke as well, which we yeah. thought, but we didn't have that information until yeah. now. So we can tell you Wano and Peke both on a yellow card. Here comes uh, Nero, takes a shot at the goal. Oh, my goodness. Nero lets that one get away. He's all by himself out in front. Oof. Yeah. you got to own it right there. Yeah, tough, tough miss there for Nero. That's... You know, what they're going to look for in Nero, I think, in this game going forward. He's a very good attacking player, up and down, open style player. So a lucky, lucky break here for Park Place. And this will be their second knock and I believe, here Third. of the day. Third. Two in the first shucker, and now this one in the, in the second. Now here comes Britos. He's going to go ahead and fire that ball for a give and go. Looking for Ujo, but he's covered up. Here comes the pass up there, and it looks like it'll be Nero to come up with the ball. He checks down right here. Turns this one back around. Ujo comes in, lights him up. Now coming in, it's going to be... Nero, or excuse me, Alario, and the ball is over the boards. Let's see who, who's going to get the possession play. It looks like it'll go in favor of Park Place. Okay. Here we go. Now, Britos. They've got Nero waiting with Britos, playing off him a little bit. He's going to hit this one back to the center, where it's going to be picked up right here by Adolfo with a neck shot. And Rufino Merlos will come up with the ball. Rufi with that ball, takes it back around, but he puts it over to the right of Jason. Jason makes the hook, but Merlos is going to go for the pass here from Nero. Merlos won't miss. He's looking good. This is where this kid shines, going to goal, and he will send it on through and get his team tied back up three goals apiece on the board right now well done rufino merlos great give and go play here rufi and augustine take another look here's the pass forward from nero picked up by rufino and merlo so deadly going towards goal makes it 3-3 here great tight game as expected you know both of these teams provide a ton of offense but in a final like this so much on the line you imagine a tight game probably Ooh. not as high scoring as both of these teams are used well to. done right here Ujoa with that ball gets away from him now Alario going to be challenged there and then he flips it Peke picks up the ball he's going to be clean right there that's a hundred percent that's a high goal play and now look at this Peke lets that horse stretch out right here can Jason catch him I don't think so but Peke drops the ball and Alario will take it forward as Nero comes into challenge Alario, man, what a back shot. He crushed that ball. First one to read the play, though, is Rufino. Now, Rufi gets away right here. Rufi Merlos takes it back. Now, great hook and a little neck shot there from Jason. And look at that. Adolfo's going to get caught again right here. Ooh, you don't see that happen very often at all. By the way, Adolfo told me, he said, uh, David Paradise is down on the sidelines at the Palenque is there, and he said that they're going to be leaving tomorrow to go to Australia for that uh, for that deal that... that um, David's putting on for them. Take what a another shot. look. Look at that neck shot from Jason to set up Ilario and very obvious from that angle. Great look from the drone, and this looks like it'll go down to at least midfield here. Uh, they, they haven't said where Oh, yet. some oh. rain coming in here, Toby. Look at that. Oh, man. Looks Hopefully. pretty. Looks like some pretty big raindrops. I don't know if they're going to call a quick timeout here to see if it'll... Nope, they're going to drop they're this gonna ball drop down, it. and it looks like... It's going to go all the way to a a penalty four. number four. Wow. Going across. I'm surprised at that. I you think there was not. The yeah, boards. I just don't think there was a lot of anybody back, really. So an appropriate call. Hey, as long as they're consistent. We actually talked about this with Fergus. You know, we'd rather see it. You know, if they're in between penalties, you know, if they can't really decide if it's going yeah, to be a four point. or five, they're going to make it a four. But, you know, it's going to be even for both teams throughout the game. And I think as a spectator, you want to see more offense than not, Toby. So here we go. Hilario on the 60-yard line, one area he's struggled a little bit from this season, just 40% shooting. But again, you can sometimes throw those stats out I mean, the window. Yeah, it's the U.S. Open Is that final. hail, Toby? It, it looks, sure looks like it. You're right, huh? Hot and heavy out there. This could affect the penalty shot as well here for Hilario. Know. We'll see. Here comes Ujoa. Yeah, he's got it. 
Alario, no trouble, sending it straight on through, picks up the point, breaks the tie, takes the lead, and makes the score 4-3 to three here in chucker number two. And we are down to one minute left to go here in this chucker. And uh, I would imagine that they might let, you know, after the chucker's over, they might give it a few minutes and see if this, this rain passes by because there's the sky doesn't look like there's a whole lot of uh, rain clouds around, the, around here, though. So 48 seconds left. Well, what are we doing here? 43 seconds that go on the clock. Well, let's take a look here. They could be talking about Oh, you know what? It was it. A, they, had, they saw an Aradura on the field. Now it's really starting to come down hard. All right, let's get through this. The guy, he's like, yeah, I got a trophy now. <laughs> Ball's back in. Not yet. Okay, umpire tricked me too. There we go. Now it's back in. First one to read the play is going to be picked up. That's the first throw in one by... Ujoa, here comes the back shot from Britos to set up Alario. Comes back in, but Adolfo takes him out. Adolfito with a back shot there from the near side looking to set up Peque, but it'll be taken now by Britos. Juano with the ball, takes it back around. Britos sends it back towards the north end of the field here, the left-hand side of the screen. Now Rufi comes in. What a nice ride off by Merlos right there, and Adolfo comes up with the ball. He's got plenty of time. Adolfo turns it back, and now here comes Britos, rides to that uh, – to the hook, doesn't try to reach out there and make some gnarly hook. He's going to stay in the saddle until he gets to the play. Coming in right now, we're down to the final few seconds left to go before the end of the chucker. Here's a back shot by Jason Waits, picked up by Peke Gonzalez. Does he have the time? He sure does. That's a goal right there. Peke picks up the point, and that's going to end chucker number one. And like I said, I would imagine we're going to take a few more minutes here and let uh, the rain pass by as the players go get in the tent. Score tied up, four goals apiece here. In the finals of the U.S. Open Polo Championship, only on the USPA Polo Network. The USPA for the outlet for for this prize, yeah, I think it's the best prize that I can I can have it. I really, really, really happy with this. They are in the organization helping me to to do everything for the horses and to be the ready. It was a long season. We play the 16 and the 22, so was not easy, but I think the horses did really well and I'm really happy to have this. Social Latia Socialista, La Viña Magia, eh, La Viña Inocencia was on, was on the best one. And I play one of my new mares that I bring this year, that is Taita Fe, that she was amazing. So that for me was one of the top one, my top ones. I always play like La Viña Inocencia in the first one and La Viña Magia in the second, and I have Taita Fe or in the third one, and in the last one, or I put in Spera with Socialista, and they finish the game in, in that form. As they play in, always in the first, and the first two jacket, and in the last one, two. Elizoli back on that little bay horse. He is gone right now, Puzz blowing the doors off of everybody. Elizalde shoots at the goal. No way. What an incredible play right there. Elizalde. Absolute racehorse, Toby. What a goal. What a run here. Tokolino was coming in maybe looking for a foul, but he was going maybe a third the speed of Elizalde. Look at this foot. Now Perotto wins the throw in right here. He is gone. He's got this one out. They can't catch him. They can't stop him. All they can do is watch it. Down and here we go. We get to see Borderline stretch out because here is Criado by himself after beating Perotto on the play. Perotto Pumpy also can't be stopped right here. Jesse tries to take a shot at him. Not going to be able to get there.
Okay, welcome back, everyone. USP Apollo Network. We are obviously having a rain delay right now, but here's the fun part. So Cody and I, we were thinking about it before the game, or yesterday we were talking about it, and we thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun. There's been so many amazing horses in the gauntlet this year. So uh, we thought, you know, let's pick our strings. Like, if you know, if we could pick the best horses, our, our opinions for – our favorite horses and we could put together our own strings and we limited this to six chuckers plus two spares. Unfortunately, but I, I regret it. I, I had to I put more in my there, idea yeah. after because I was going through and realized how, you know, there's so many countless good horses here in the gauntlet. It's pretty tough, but we'll see. Toby and I don't know each other's exactly picks yet. So we're going to do this live and maybe see if we have any of the same ones. So we'll see here. We tried to do this, and Toby, you told me you thought I was going to pick Mega Big Bay, so you purposely didn't. That's and I, right. I love this pick of, for you, Open Irani. Yeah. But this, we're also thinking about how we would play the, these horses as well throughout the game. So this is, you know, like Wano likes to do, I would start on Mega Big Bay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'd put mine. It says I had a tough time figuring out where I'd put each horse. I just know that these are the ones I want to play. So I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put them in any order myself. So okay. There you I go. thought of, I mean, the, here's the thing. That's you, fine. Could, you could kind of play them all any chucker. See, that squirrel. I, that was another one that I was like, mm, I was him and Han over. So yep. good, good call there. Of course, you know, I'm going to take I, Paloma. I had a feeling you were going to go with Paloma too. <laughs> Obviously an honorable mention for me. She didn't make my list. You know, that's I, all right. A little, a little tough to be completely honest. Now, this one here, by Lorena for me, because, I mean, you know, she won Best best Horse of the Year, and Peroto just shredded on her. Yeah, and, well, String of the Year went to Fran Elizalde, mm -hmm. and Lavinia Innocencia was Good one, one of his best all year. And, you know, it really came down to as well when I was thinking about it. We had both Hilario Ujoa and Adolfo Cambiasso say they would like a couple of Fran's I thought horses, about that, so, too, yep. You know, I thought I should consider that fact a bit as well. Exactly right. And, all right, so let's see who we got here. Yep, Mega SBF for Facundo for me, and then Cavasca for you. Well, Cavasca's on my list, too. So oh, there you <laughs> go, yeah. yeah. It's a, as, no, I had another tough time as well de deciding who ah, I wanted. I was going to do oh. Twitter, too. <laughs> there you go. Well, I think... <laughs> I think you might see Mega Espia on my list. I figured as, so as well, Toby. But we both we agreed go. on Cavasca and there. You go. And yeah. And Bailarina. And you know, I figured I'd I'd, I'd end strong on the horse of there the year. There you go. Chucker I like it. Six. And Dolph hey, Dolphina Maria can't really go wrong. Yeah. And there's Mega. Yeah, I'd, I figured SPM. like Facundo, I'd play Mega Espia as a spare. That's sure. Why there you I, go. I, she's you know not seventh on my list. <laughs> right. Say, exactly. But, I figured I'd keep her as a spare. Open as a Renka. And then now this one, I figured this one might throw you a little bit there, but you no. Know, well, you know what, Toby? I honestly, I, you know, I, I'm sure Lucas is at the field right now. He might listen to this later, but one of the first horses on my honorable mention list, which is incredibly <laughs> yeah, long. Yeah, mine too. But yeah. I thought about that. You know what other horse I thought about was Coppa Feel. Yeah. Of Jillian Johnson. We that saw was an Facundo, honorable mention for me too. Facundo Pires play. And, you know, I was thinking, if that horse can play for Jillian and Facundo as well as it does for both, I would feel like myself, who isn't quite a 10 goal rider like Facundo, <laughs> probably be a great horse for me. I mean, other honorable mentions, one that was on was Lavinia Morea, Machitos Mesquite as well for Hilario, who I think we'll see later in this game. And you can see Hilario coming out on Latia Cavasca here, yeah. this chucker. And then work to rise commenting right now and says, uh, "Whoa, well, you have such different picks. What do you like?" Well, I mean, what can we it's, know? You know, like I said, I, well, some other honorable mentions. Borderline's I, coming out right now. So yeah, there you we go. got There's some one cool. For Nero. Another great horse. I actually we talked to Peke about is this gelding. He's on Sapukai, and we actually yep. heard a little bit from Peke about this horse. Okay, here we go. Ball's back into play. Um, Sapukai. Um... Well, she's a gilling that I bought, I bought in 2017 or 18, I can't remember exactly. Fran Lanuse called me one, one day and he called my father and saying that I might found a horse for, for Peque. I think he's going to suit him well. And I tried him in Argentina in the fall season. Uh, I loved him. I played him that year at the Camara. And then he came in 2019 to play with me, uh, with Iconica, the, the gauntlet. And since then he has been playing for me forever. Uh, Okay, wow. So what a goal. We just saw Adolfo score there from distance. Unbelievable. So we've got a 5-4 score on the board. Now that's the first time today that Valiente will break the tie and take the lead here. So 5-4 is now the score. Okay, coming back now. Here we go. Now it's going to be 
Adolfo Camiasso to win another throw-in here. I think he's won all but one throw-in so far. Ujoa has won one, maybe two throw-ins, uh, Britos and Ujoa. Now Adolfo holds that ball. He winds up. He fires back down towards the goal. Britos lets it get away from him. Coming in, Peke jumps on that loose ball. Uh oh, somebody missed their man right here. Peke is going to make him pay for it right now. Peke gets, oh, no way, off the post. What bad luck. And then, ooh, yeah, good call. Well done, Juan Britos. Incredible situational awareness here from Juan Britos. He saw Augustine Nero coming in to make that near side back shot. He knew there's no way that Nero could not fall over the right of way after the shot. So he just checks right here and lets Brit and lets uh, Juan and lets um, Augustine Nero create this foul right there. Yeah, oh, great play by Juano there. What unlucky, uh, lucky break for Juano. Unlucky play for Peke on Sapukai. Like we were just, he was Sapukai. just telling us Sapukai. And, you know, he mentioned to me as well, he calls this horse his war horse. Yeah. Bottom of the green horse he's playing. And yeah, the, horse played Pato, which is an incredibly tough sport they play down in Argentina. Yeah, he was saying that, you know, when the horses, when they start playing Pato like that, he said they, they really learn to be, because it's, it's so rough, the game, you know, bumping and riding off. He said they really, he, the horse learns how to be stout and solid. So Nero right here on borderline. Now here goes Ujoa. He's going to bust past everybody. Going to blow the doors off of Adolfo right here out in front. Look at this. Keeps that one away from Adolfo. And we've got a tie ball game. Ujoa playing every bit of 10 goals here today incredible play right there and that's going to be his fifth goal of the game all goals scored four park place have come off the mount of Ilario Ujoa so far today you talked about it you had a feeling Ilario was going to show up here oh I'm, man I feel like we all did but another fantastic goal Hilario just so tough he gets just barreling towards goal has that great hand eye so tough to stop what a game back and forth we go here Mohammed Five goals nine more for Hilario. He can reach a hundred. Yeah, Mo uh, Mohammed says uh, one more spare would be Exclusiva. Exclusiva was definitely on my list. And Cody, I'm sure, yeah, you I, too. I I'm mean, sure. Exclusiva, Mega Progressiva, Kenya yep. Fly from Keko Magrini. I mean, amazing. Yeah, a bunch a of them. There. Aloe Vera in the Hena, who we're going to see for Wano later yep. on. Hey, with the list, look at Peke right now. He's going for it right here. Peke down in front. Can he get it done? Open back shot to the goal. Oh, well done, Jason. Way to be there. What a play, Jason Waits. Goes all the way to the road, but because, look, we got some rain. It's a little slick. I like what he did right there. He didn't try to bank back around and stay on the field. He just went ahead and went straight across to the road. Didn't let that horse get a chance to fall because, you know, it is yes. a little bit slick after the Certainly the not getting run away on. No. Now, knock-in, the fifth, fourth knock-in of the day so far here for Ujoa and for Park Place. They've got Augustine Nero starting with the hitter. Remember, Adolfo was going to the hitter there for a while in some of, the, in some of their earlier games. Now, a great knock-in here to Britos. He's going to have Ujoa taken out. Whoa. I'm surprised you didn't see something there. Now it's going to be Britos here. He's going to be put in the pocket by Peke. Peke trying to get to him. Britos caught him flat-footed just for the moment there. And now it's going to be, man, Wano's playing fantastic today. Back shot here to Ujoa. What a play. Look at this. That is fantastic. I love that. Power polo right here. Ujoa winds up, puts his whole body into it, sends it down here for Jason. Jason takes the hit from uh, nice try there. Now, good job by Rufino Merlos. Ujoa right there with Adolfo, and now it's going to be Jason to let the ball be taken here by Britos. Britos goes ahead, goes to run past those defenders. Britos looking good, avoids the hook. He keeps it going, swings through the hook of Peke Gonzalez. Can't quite keep it going. Next one to get there is going to be Rufino Merlos. Drops that ball. Ujoa hits the back shot, and Adolfo comes back up to it. Adolfo loses the play right there to Juan Britos. Wano with a tail shot right here. Look at that. What a shot. Sends it back towards the goal. Coming in, it's going to be Peke there. Peke with the, with the play. Peke gets to it. Peke Gonzalez banking the turn. Now gets out of there, and now he gets this ball moving down the field. And one thing we know about both these teams, and especially, especially Peke right here. Uh-oh. They're going to catch him, it looks like. The one thing that we know about both these teams is they are open, hit-and-run kind of teams. You're not going to see a whole lot of messing with the ball. Uh what we saw there where they got bogged down just a bit uh, about a minute ago was was about as much as you're going to see as far as tapping goes. These two teams, they hit, they run, they play open classic style polo. I think they're catching Peke on this. Yeah, one. they are. They're going to catch him for taking Coming the ball across. on the wrong side. Yeah, yeah, I didn't make contact with Britos there. That's what I'm thinking anyway. We'll see if that is what indeed the case. So umpires are talking about it. And perhaps we can take another look at it ourselves here while we wait for the call. But from that initial angle, that's what it looked like. We'll, we're just speculating, of course. We'll wait and see what our two Manit officials decide. They could be talking about the foul or ball placement. Uh, well, the, yeah, I mean, as of now, I mean, they, they, they've they blown it against Peke. I wouldn't think there'd be much of a ball placement issue. It'd be spot hit. 
So it would be whether or not they believe that there was a foul on the play, which it seemed like it was. Maybe they, you know, maybe they will move it up. I don't know. We'll see. Or, yeah, penalty five from the spot. Okay, that is going to be the case. What? Did we just see? I think they might just say, well, throw in is look what it looked no. like Julian was. I thought so too, Appleby but. he was signaling. Nope, here we go. Penalty five from yeah. the spot. Looks like Juana will get that. That was just one. weird, wasn't it? <laughs> it was just, yeah, just a bit of a weird. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if they were talking to the third man about it. Either way, penalty five from the spot, and it's what we assumed was going to be the call here. So just behind midfield, Delario going for it. Okay. Here we go. Now here's the shot. Now it's going to be picked up by Rufino Merlos with an open back shot. Juano's going to get to it. Britos takes this ball with him. He's got uh, Peke keeping an eye on him. Peke looking to do some poaching right here if he can. But here comes Jason to lay the pick. Now it's going to be Britos still with that ball. Britos takes it for... Uh, yeah, yeah, wow. Well done. What a play right here. By Britos gives it back over to Ujoa. Now Nero comes in. Now it's going to be Jason Waits with Adolfo Cambiasso. Wow. Okay, there again. <laughs> Let him play. All right. Adolfo takes off with it. Adolfo Cambiasso working back down the field here. Adolfo looking good. Now Adolfo comes back around. Adolfo puts it back. Oh, he put it there. I don't think you'll see a whistle on that one. Now it's going to be picked up again here by Rufino Merlos. Look at this young man right here. One goal going to three. Rufino. Started off this year as zero goals. Gets his clock cleaned right there by Ujoa. Ujoa with a back shot. Britos comes up with the play. Takes it forward. Wano taking it across the field right now. Wano, he's going to get his throat cut there by Peke, who takes it forward again. Peke comes back to the ball on his offside. Going to get away from Britos. Runs the turn back around. Now he's going to hit the next shot here. And it'll be picked up by Nero. Obviously Nero on borderline, can't get the ball under control, loses that play there to, Bre to Ujoa, and he takes off running. That's a clean play right there, a high goal play by Alario uh, Ujoa, and he is out in front, but we know borderline can run. Borderline's going to catch him right here. He, here he goes, Wano, or excuse me, Augustine Nero trying to get to Ujoa. Ujoa fires, and that's the first chink in the armor we've seen from Ujoa all day, shooting at goal. It goes wide over the back line. We still have another minute and a half to go here in chucker number three. Well, credit Nero there, never giving up on the defense pressuring Ujoa for the miss. We may get a timeout here. Yeah. Jason's asking for it. And that's a, a long chucker there on JP Borderline as yeah, well. Yeah, really, right? But we do have an all-made change here. Here's the replay. Look at that. Well done. He got there. Yeah, just a little bump. As Lario was shooting, you can see hand on the head. Lario, a little upset with himself. You know, you know it's funny? Cody, when I was down there with both teams before the game started, I was thinking that I would see these guys, they would all be like intense, like focused, like quiet, like, you know, in the zone. Every, both teams, both teams, they were all smiling. They were having fun. They were loosening up. I mean, they're, they're so happy to be here. They're like the best in the world in, in the finals of the, the biggest tournament in North America, one of the, the biggest tournaments in the world. And everybody in here, they're, they're, you could tell they were like in the moment having a great time, not, not like focused and, and all that kind of stuff. Here comes the pass from Adolfo back over to Peke. He hits it down here, and now it's going to be Rufi Merlos to pick up this ball. Oh, Rufino drops it there. Next one to get to it. Peke back on that ball. Looks like it's going to be Ujoa here to come up with the play. He takes the hit. Peke shot towards the goal, and it's going to be Jason. And another back shot right there, and now another quick back shot here from... Uh, we get a whistle on the play. Well, Valiente was looking for a foul there. Three times. Juano took that back shot. And here's some intensity from these players. You love that. And I'm wondering if Wano comes across on the back shot here. Comes in. Here's a bit of yeah, a change. Yeah, good call, umpires. That's a great call right there. Nero jumps on the line, draws the foul. Penalty number two, it looks like here. Going to take it from the spot as well. So Peke missed a penalty shot earlier. In this game, a penalty two. This one's a bit closer, though. Peke, no trouble this time. He sends it straight on through, breaks a tie, takes back the lead, and makes a score six to five with maybe enough time for another throw in. I think we should have enough time for at least one more throw in, actually, now that I look at it. Okay, so that's Peke's first goal of the game. He had one earlier from the field. Did I miss one? 
You're right. Yep, he sure did. I missed one there. Yeah. Now, Nero wins the throw and takes off running right here, but Ujo is going to take the ball after he takes out Nero. Now, Alario. Ujoa with control right here. Alario takes off running once again, avoids the hook there from Nero. Nero still trying to get to him as it's going to be Alario. Goes the whole way down the field here, looking good. Ujoa checks down right now, holds that ball as Rufino comes in to put him in the pocket. Now, Alario still with that ball. He's going to get away. Now he's looking for some help from Jason Waits. Jason looking for a man to take and try to give some space right here to Ujoa. Ujoa gets away from the man. Ujoa down in front. He's in the red zone. Ujoa fires at the goal. Alario, does he run out of time? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Well, it's going to be Chucker either way. Didn't Alario yeah. score that? It, I think he may have. They're talking to the officials. They're talking to each other. We'll wait and see here. Yeah, let's watch one more time. We're not sure exactly when the horn goes. You know, Alario here also looking for a whistle. On that shot, thinking Adolfo is crowding him a bit. Yeah. One well. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's going to be a, a whistle right now, or a, a goal as of right now. We'll find out, though, after this. Remember, we take a longer than normal halftime. It is a feature game of the, of the year. Uh, we're going to have a very special guest join us, though, at halftime. We're going to have the uh, most recent inductee to the Polo Hall of Fame, the youngest ever inductee to the Polo Hall of Fame, Jeff Hall, is going to be joining us uh, at halftime. We're going to get his take on the game, the first half of the game so far, and then also on his experience playing with La Alina and uh, playing the Westchester Cup. So we're going to go to a quick break. We'll come back and have Jeff join us then. So stay with us. We'll be right back here on the USPA Polo Network. Since I was one, I love uh, horses. Uh, being in the barns, around the barns, going to each practice game that my, my father was playing, or the games, helping in the sidelines. Side I just like it, I love it, and I do it because I love it. Winning the, the US Open with the Scone that, that year was, was amazing. I obviously was a little nervous at the beginning because I didn't know how many times I was going to be able to, to, to leave that, no? to be able to play with Adolfo and Poroto in the same team and be in the finals. I was like really nervous and obviously I wanted to win it. It was a great feeling to be there, but at the same time, I remember the first track that I did horrible because I was a little nervous. Hey, hey, perdón, me estoy mirando el Coming back to help out now, it's going to be Peke to take out Matt Capola and then pick up the ball. Looking good, he's down in front, he's in the red zone. But then as the game went on, you kind of lose the that feeling and you start playing the, the game and uh, going back to 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 that moment the, when we finished the game, uh, I remember jumping off the horse and hugging with my father for a long time, I think he was crying. And we stayed there for a while. So it was a big, a big moment for the family. And for myself also, I was, it was my first US Open final to be able to win it with them, with that team. It meant a lot and so it was amazing. What we did this season with uh, Iconica and so far with Valiente, it's, it's really, really nice. So really happy, really thankful to my father and my mother that support me all the time. And uh, I keep on working and, and aim for the US Open now that it's uh, the last one and the most important one. Man, what a great video that was. Uh, that's uh, really cool to, to get to see Peke and his experience there. But right now, we've got our very special guest joining us here. The, like I said before, the most uh, recent inductee to the Polo Hall of Fame and the youngest ever inductee, Jeff Hall. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. No, oh, thank, Thanks for having me, guys. So, Jeff, you're in Texas right now, right? I am. I am. I came here the other day. Unfortunately, you know, we lost um, the quarterfinals. So I uh, came here to get ready for our, our Texas season. So 
here and it's raining. So I kind of wish I was there. <laughs> yeah, if you got to be in rain, why not? Right, I hear you. Well, um, well, right, talking right. about Lalina, why don't you tell us a bit about uh, about your experience playing with Lalina this year? Yeah, um, Lalina was a was a great experience. Um, a lot of people to thank there. You know, Bobby Jerry and a and a bunch of other people, um, Lucchese, uh AIPF, Chris Dawson, Paul ASSN, a bunch of people uh, came together to make that happen. Um, you know, kind of four four pros. Um, this is the second year La Lina's done that. Um, it was a great experience. You know, we didn't really play with a team sponsor that was playing on the field, so um, it was kind of a different different format. Luckily, we had good coaches, uh, Tommy Biddle and and Tinsha Merlos. Um, I felt like you know we we started off a little slow, but we got our rhythm. Um, you know, we. Well, ironically, we lost to both of the both of these teams that are playing today are the two teams that knocked us out. You know, uh, Valiente and the CD Whitney and Park Place twice in the Gold Cup uh, and the Open. So uh, it was a good run, good fun, um, and we'll see what happens next year. Fantastic, man. Well, that's great. Uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, that's kind of. You know, if you're going to get beat by anybody, why? You know, these are probably the two teams you'd want to get beat by for sure. The guys that are in the in the finals of the U.S. Open here. Um, well, you also played the the uh, the Westchester Cup. Uh, is that was did it, was this your first time playing for the USA in the Westchester Cup, or did you play? Is no, second, the third? no, no. So this was my third time playing third the Westchester time, that's right. Cup. Yeah, thought it was going to be the third the the third uh, third times a charm, but unfortunately, you know, we didn't have our great game. Uh, you know, great game that day. Yeah. Um, hats off to the English. They played really well. They, uh, they came over. They they were really well organized, and um, you know, kind of. I think we need to take a take a point from them and and keep organized with our American international teams to um, and keep the momentum going. Um, you know, not not much to say. Just kind of, to be honest, we're very disappointed that we lost. Yeah. But uh, not taking anything away from the English. They played great, and um, you know, we got to get better and. Uh, Hopefully we'll see him soon again. Yeah, yeah. I think Jeff, as for the La Alina team going forward in the open after that loss, I think maybe, I don't know if it was, I don't want to call it a wake up call or just a learning experience, but you guys really seem to come together and play great polo after that. Again, a pretty tough draw for your team in the open and getting knocked out by a couple of very good teams in the gauntlet. But would you say that kind of brought you guys together a bit and made you play better in the open after that Westchester cup game? I don't, I don't know if it was a wake up call. I mean, I think we're all, you know, all four of us that played, you know, we were a hundred percent committed. We, we worked really hard with the coaches, with the team. We gave it everything, you know, it's just sometimes, you know, things don't go a hundred percent your way. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, I think uh, to be honest, you're looking back at it now, I think we had a lot of pressure on us uh, mm -hmm. in that Westchester cup. I felt like, you know, there's a lot of pressure on us to win and and everyone kind of thought you know and it was it was a tough team you know that, they're a 25 goal team we're a 22 goal team and they made us play off our highest world ranking so you know it, it was a um it was a tough go um i think we kind of fell out of our system a little bit we got a little bit behind in the fort chucker and we fell out of our system um but you know learning experience and you, the only thing you can do is go forward right well exactly i i completely agree with you there we have um uh, we have uh, a, a question coming. Well, Mohammed is, is a guy that, that he comments quite a bit. Uh, he, he's a really he's a fan of, this, of the, the program, and he says, Jeff, what was that special moment winning the U.S. Open at 17? And he says, congrats on being the youngest uh, ever Hall of Famer. So uh, I remember you won with, uh, with C-Spear, right? Yeah, I won with C-Spear. I think he's talking about someone else, maybe Nick Roldan. I didn't win it when I was 17. That's right. I think I you were won it when I was that. probably I 23, right. tw okay. about 23 years old, somewhere around there. But uh, I, that was a special team. We kind of, you know, we beat everybody that season. I think that we only amazing. lost I once or that. twice in the 22 goal. Um, but, you know, winning the US Open is a special, special day. And, you know, if you're lucky enough to get there, I think I've lost – I've played a lot more finals than I've won. I've won it only once, and I've played probably six finals. So. Wow, that's really amazing. Well, there, there, another claim to fame that I know that you have is is the Silver Cup. Uh, you've won that more than anybody else, right? Is it 10 or 11 now? Uh, it's 10, yeah, 10, 10 times. Okay, all right. Uh, well, let's go back to this game. Like, you know, from what you've been watching so far, what do you think, Jeff? What do you think? If you're the coach for each team, what would you be telling Valiente? What would you be telling Park Place right now? 
Well, part, you know, Valiant is one in my on from my count. They've won ten of the eleven throw-ins. I yeah. I've seen Park Place has only won one throw-in, so that's killing that's killing Park Place. Um, you know, Park Place is a really difficult team for Valiente to play against because those two players, Britos and Alario, they really they rotate really fast. They know each other super well, and they're extremely well mounted. So they kind of like they tend to slow it down and then speed out of the pocket and come out sure. of the pocket with speed. So that's something that Valiente is going to have a hard time dealing with. You know, it's tough. My hat's off to Valiente. It's really tough to lose one of their players um, so late in the season. I think Nagrita was playing incredible this year. He's a friend of mine. He's a great player. It's un- really unfortunate that he had that accident the other day and really unfortunate that he couldn't be, you know, finishing the season with his team. But, um, you know, Adolfo's the GOAT, man. He he put together, a you know, a good scrappy team here, and, and Rufino's really good. So – you know, Park Place is going to is going to try to to um, extend the game and 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 move the ball because they've got four players that are good with the ball. And Park Place is going to try to slow it down and kind of come out of the pocket with Alario and Brita. So I don't know; it's a tough one. Yeah, very much so. All right. Well, do you have a do you have a prediction on who you think is going to be able to, to pull it out in the end? I knew you guys were going to ask me this, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, going into the game, I was going to take park place because you know if there's one guy that does really well against adolfo it's alario yeah. but you can't call, count adolfo out you know so i think this one's going to come down to the end i really don't i think i, mean, I right, really yeah. can't make a prediction i mean I'm, I, I'm i'm really surprised that we even saw peke miss that penalty too and i wonder if that's going to come back to haunt them in the end i mean um well you know i was sitting here watching that going wow that that could be a big uh moment in this game because that was to put them up by two and they countered with uh, with a goal on the other, an incredible goal by Alario on the yeah. other end. So yeah, you know, like a two goal we'll swing. Really, yeah, think about it. Two goal swing there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Jeff, man, thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And then, uh, you know, also before we let you go, I mean, youngest ever inductee to the Polo Hall of Fame. I mean, that's got to be such a special achievement for you. Uh, to, you know, tell us about uh, about that. I mean, is that just? I know my dad's been inducted. You, you're in there with some with some really some giants. Uh, you know. Was it, uh, were you surprised when you got the nod? Oh yeah, I know. I was definitely surprised. Um, kind of shocked to be honest with you, but you know, what an honor. Um, you know, I think I, you know, I, I love the sport. It's my passion. So, you know, when I started playing polo, you know, I, you know, I never thought I was going to be inducted to the hall of fame. I never thought I was going to win the tournaments that I've won and, and as many as I've won, but you know, they're kind of, you know, they're just by byproducts of what you love to do. So, you know, it's uh it was a huge um recognition i think of all the hard work that you know that i put into it and and i love it and i'm not i'm not done yet i'm going to keep going and and it. um but yeah it was it was definitely a special night that's fantastic man yeah well i know you know uh over the past few years i know that you've been just pumping more and more time and effort and money and, and everything into into getting yourself as well mounted as possible you've got some really amazing horses right now i think you're super well mounted and um you know, like you said, you're not done yet. You're, you're 43 years old. You've got plenty more left in you. Uh, and, and so we look forward to, to seeing more of you here on the USPA Polo Network. I can speak. I know I speak for Cody when I say that, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so. I appreciate it, guys. Thank, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thanks again for, to, for calling in. We, we appreciate it. We're going to find out what's going to happen with this game because it's coming down pretty hard right now. So when we get some more information, we'll let you all know. But, again, thank you to Jeff Hall for being our special halftime guest here for the finals of the U.S. Open Polo Championship. And we'll be back in just a few minutes here uh, for hopefully the second half of this final. <laughs>
My name is Rufino Merlos. I am son of Agustin Merlos. We are from Pilar, Argentina, and I'm 15 years old. This early season, I've been in the La Fe organization, uh, playing the 16 goals and the eight goals with Dazos. This is my first year uh, with a big organization, so uh, I prepare myself a lot for this uh, opportunity. A lot of mentally preparation, preparation with the horses, uh, with my dad. He was a tenor, so he helped me a lot with advice. Merlos will finish it, and that will do it for Andiana. They won the second semi-final of the day. It's quite special every time I play to have him outside uh, the field. Uh, no, I don't think I have uh, any kind of pressure. I just uh, love the sport, and I. As knowing my grandfathers and uncles and my father, all of the family were great polo players. I just tried to take the more advice I can from them. And I think if I if I get myself into it, I can really do it because it's what I it's what I want to do. I play polo all around the world, but uh, Wyoming is one of my favorite places to be in the summer. The way we play here, you know, makes, makes the polo really fun for everybody. These fields are amazing. I don't think you can see any, any field like this in, in the summertime. Any level of polo can be played on them. It's just one of the better programs in the country for sure. You know, I can't, I can't think of another program that would compare to, compare to the Flying Age. It's a great country for, for green horses and breed. You can play greener horses, everybody is going to respect you. This part of the world is probably the best ever for raising horses. It's all the same in building a happy, competitive polo pony. And the weather is, is amazing. It's just a beautiful country out there with no shortage of things to do. This will be the best place you're going to find for the summer, surrounded by the best people.
Okay, so we just uh, I just I just spoke with Fergus uh, Gould and he said that um, you know, they're going to try to wait wait this out. Uh, we're going to try to get this game played today. So he said, you know, we've we've heard certain we've heard people say that it might pass by. Uh, we're not sure. I mean, it's really coming down right now, but obviously this Cody, you know, finals the US Open, they want to get it played. So he, Fergus did say that we're not calling it yet. The, the game is still on as of now. Yeah, so hopefully this weather does pass by sort of you know different information we have heard the thunder rumbling of course we don't want any lightning in the area so hopefully this will pass over again you get to play weatherman here toby so we'll be right one way or the other but apparently there are some blue skies to the east so hopefully this will pass over and we'll check the field to make sure it's playable well the other thing is you know you know that brings up the, the best probably the best job in the world is a weatherman you could be wrong 100 percent of the time and still keep your job no problem you know <laughs> so but hopefully um yeah, I mean, you can tell. You can see right now on screen, it is really coming down. I just, I just stepped outside the studio to see what's what what it looks like out there, and I mean, it's yeah, like uh, it's big old fat rain for sure. Like like Forrest Gump would say. I mean, it's uh, really coming down. So anyway, when we get an update, we'll come back and let you know what's going on. Um, we're gonna go back to break ten now and, and see what we can find out from uh, the officials here at the field.
about when you get up early, prep the plane, and you take off, and you get that first light of day, and the air is crystal smooth. You can see forever. You have to have the right aircraft for the right flight with the right crew up front. Only net jets can do this. The flight dissolves into the background. It should just be the here and now. In Argentina, in the south of the continent, we have the best polo in the world. And this is no coincidence at all. Our land is a unique natural environment. This is where we also sustainably produce the best beef in the world. Argentine beef. Sustainable beef. Argentine beef, official sponsor of the National Polo Center at the U.S. Open Polo Championship. philosophy of Centennial Partnerships is to mitigate risk through diversification and that includes a group of horses and a group of people. But we don't want to take away the experience and the fun of the sport so we limit the number of people in each partnership. We try to make the experience for people as exciting and as memorable as possible.
All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. As you can tell, you can barely see the Valiente tent. We finally got the word. They're going to they're going to call the game today. There's no way we're going to be able to finish. We don't have a, 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 a we don't know when they're going to reschedule the game just yet. But um, sort of feel like a kid on Christmas with yeah, an empty stocking right for now. Real, Toby, right? We're going to have to reschedule this final. Like Toby just said, no call yet, of course, with this weather on exactly when we're going to get this game played. So keep your eyes peeled on social media as well as uspolo.org. And once there is, you know, a scheduled confirmation to play the remainder of this game, we'll, you know, we'll find out and let you know as soon as we do, Toby. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, for, so on that note, well, for Cody Offen, I'm Toby Wayman. Thanks so much for tuning in to the USPA Polo Network. Uh, we'll see you for the remainder of the final here, the 2023 US Open Polo Championship. Whenever, Whenever we decide, whenever they, they can get it scheduled here, because with this much rain, I would imagine, I know they'll try to play it tomorrow, but if not, maybe Tuesday. So like Cody said, keep up with the social media and we'll see you then.